Welcome to the Career Change Podcast, where you'll discover the frank and practical advice and resources that are already proven to work in the real world when it comes to changing careers or figuring out what business is right for you when you are a smart but likely also stuck, overwhelmed or overthinking person in your mid-30s, your 40s, your mid-50s. I'm your host, Ricky Hansen, a career change advisor, entrepreneur and former corporate HR professional with over 15 years experience of helping thousands of people just like you identify or create careers or businesses that are both meaningful and future-proof. Welcome home. Hey, it's Ricky here. Welcome to episode 43 of the Career Change Podcast, the real worst case scenario for career changes over 35. Now, this episode is especially for you overthinkers and perfectionists. So I want you to get ready to feel like a hypochondriac because for good reason, In this episode, I'll take you on a quick guided tour inside of your head and show you just how you're wasting valuable time, energy, and brain cells on what I call career change, worst case, distraction scenarios. Career change, worst case, distraction scenarios. All whilst ignoring the fact that you might already be in your career worst case scenario. Yep. You heard that right. I'm assuming you're listening to the Career Change Podcast because you want a career change or you, you know, whether that's changing careers or starting a business or whatever that looks like. So I'm assuming that therefore means that right now you are likely a mid-career professional, you're over 35, you're fed up with your current work, you know, you might be overworked or maybe you're bored, maybe you're doing the resentful quitting or bored quitting or quiet quitting, whatever you, whatever category you're in, you might be in a toxic culture, you, you know, whether it's your boss or your profession or your job or your colleagues, whatever it is. There's a whole lot of stuff going on that you are not happy with. Now, I could go on and on about what it might be like for you right now, but just just leave it there. You know what I'm talking about. So if that sounds like you, then I have a question for you. I want to ask you to consider something right up front before we even go into this episode. And that is this. When it comes to your personal career change, what if your worst case scenario was actually the one you're in right now? or something very much like it, where you haven't even started your career change. And you haven't, you know, you haven't even done, if you're really honest with yourself, you probably haven't had a proper stop at your career transition yet. And also you're really fed up with where you are right now. So at the same time, you're therefore risking both your career change not happening, but also potentially sabotaging your current career because it's not going anywhere. You are de-skilling yourself, potentially even sabotaging your own efforts in your current job. So If you could see your current job or work scenario like that for what it truly is, an already worst case scenario, when compared to actually being in your best case scenario, your best career or your best business, do you think it would then make it easier and more importantly, more urgent for you to actually get your butt in gear with your career change now? Hmm? Or Would this information just make you do the same thing that you're likely doing right now? Make you just want to stay put and worried and fearful about changing and instead staying with the devil you know, right? This is a default a lot of people are making. And here's what I want to tell you a... That, that I hope is going to be helpful for you because I really want you to change and, and really get this. A good indication of which of those two choices you've already made is to look at how you are actually, how you are actually spending your time and your energy so you can diagnose and decide if you want to make a more empowering choice or if you're happy with the result of the choice you've already made by default or in action. So listen closely when I go through the the different scenarios we're going to talk about and see where you fit. Because here's what I can tell you. I have spent as if you're a regular listener, you know, I've spent over 18 years inside of the head of career changes, right? The last 18 years. So what I can tell you, having spent a lot of time inside of people just like you, inside of their heads, is that most aspiring career changers, most aspiring business owners, they waste the majority, they waste an awful lot of time and energy worrying about what I call worst case career change scenarios that they see in their future, right? That's what they worry about, all of these worst case scenarios. If that would happen, if they were to change careers or start that business. And they, they spend so much time focused on that, that also the while they ignore the fact 
that they're already in their worst case scenario and actually have very little to lose and everything to gain if they were to go for their best case scenario instead. But they stay stuck because they're so worried about what would happen if they do. (laughs) So let me take you through some of the most insidious worst case scenario thinking that I've come across so I can show you just how unhelpful these worst case scenario thinkings they actually are. But of course, in Ricky's style, most importantly, the antidotes to actually overcoming them. All right. So you're in for a treat, my friend, but it's also going to be, like I said, quite high, you know, you're going to feel like a hypochondriac, but for good reason. (laughs) So let me tell you right up front, the three massive worst case distraction scenarios I've come across. Um, And then we'll go um, into each one of them step by step. So worst case scenario, distraction scenario number one, is I see people focus almost exclusively on what they stand to lose if they were to change careers, right? You focus almost exclusively on what you stand to lose if you were to change careers. Like, oh my God, I'll be throwing it all away if I change careers, is how you think. Worst case distraction scenario number two is that you worry about having nothing to offer if you were to change careers. You know, who would you be without your profession, without your job title, without your status, without your reputation? The fear here is that you fear going empty handed into the future, having nothing to offer. That's what you distract yourself worrying about. Worst case distraction scenario number three is where you mindlessly worry, you know, you waste time and energy worrying in advance, what I call worrying in advance. And what this means is that it means that you worry about things that might or might not happen way into the future or way ahead of time. Instead of actively dealing with the worst case scenario, you're already in right now. Instead, you chose to focus on worst case scenarios that might happen in the future or might not. (laughs) So I'm sure you might have all three, right? That's very normal, but you probably spend more time in one or two or three of these, right? And like I said, again, don't worry. I won't let you hang. I won't leave you hanging just describing those things. Of course, I want to give you antidotes. All right, so let's go straight into worst case distraction scenario number one. And this is you where you focused, when you focus almost exclusively on what you stand to lose if you were to change careers, Right? What you're thinking is, I'll be throwing it all away if I change careers, right? Help, ah, I'll be throwing it all away. So let me get inside your mind with you here. Whether that's at 3 a.m. or Friday, 3 p.m. or Tuesday, whatever it is, it's this repeating, recurring, you know, distraction scenario that you choose to worry about rather then work on your career change. So is this kind of, oh my God, but what What if I throw it all away by changing careers at my age? I've spent the last 10, 20 years establishing myself in this profession. If I change, everything I work so hard for will be lost. Maybe followed by this mental picture of you sliding all the way down the ladder of career progression. You'd be swallowed by this endless pit of oblivion. You'll never re-emerge again. <laughs> One of my clients said to me, Ricky, I've got this mental picture of me in this kind of gangster car, you know, rolling down the window and like throwing banknotes out the window. I'll just be throwing everything away. You know, I'm sure you've got your favorite horror scene here. So just think about how, what is your kind of throwing it all away? What's that, you know, nightmare you are entertaining? But right up front, I also want to say this. Just do the maths and be really honest with yourself. How much time do you actually spend focusing on these worst case scenarios versus actually working on your career change or your business and working on your best case scenario? Just get honest. There's like a very good reason why you're stuck and you'll know this right up front. (laughs) So the antidote because you are very clear about what this nightmare is about. So the antidote to throwing it all away is to identify exactly what actually needs to be thrown away or what needs to be left behind over time, right? So the antidote to throwing it all away is to identify, well, what is it actually that does need to be thrown away, right? Because clearly you are not happy, you are in pain. So clearly something needs to be thrown away. Something needs to be left behind. And this is something I love doing with my clients, really help them reframe how lucky they are to be able to change careers or to go through a career transition process to really help them reframe how they view their career change. And I want you to do this as well, because right now you are likely stuck because 
and, and instating all these nightmare scenarios because you see your career change as, as being throwing it all away. Now, does that feel helpful or empowering? Likely not, because your resulting thought, if you think it's about throwing it all away, is that, oh my God, a career change is a matter of all or nothing. And then if you're fearful and a worry ward and risk averse, then what do you do? You choose to do nothing. But here's what I want you to reframe. And here's what I want you to do instead. What if instead you started thinking of your career change as the perfect way, a great way to get rid of the elements that are causing you pain in your current job, in your profession, in your career, you see your career change as a great way to get rid of those elements, identifying them and getting rid of them because they're no longer serving you, right? What you are doing is your worry. Right now, you're worried about throwing it all away. You're, sta- you're focused on what you stand to lose. That is not a good use of your time or brain power. Instead, what I recommend, you should be grateful be grateful that you actually have this really incredible opportunity to let to identify and let go, get rid of the elements of your current career or professional job that are causing you the most pain. Wow, that's incredible. You're able to do that. So my friend, instead of distracting yourself with this imagined worst case scenario of throwing all away, instead what I want you to do is establish an intelligent baseline. If right now or for a while you've not been happy in your career, then clearly something needs to be thrown away. That is a good thing to do. You should want to. It's an incredible opportunity that you have, right? Again, let's be clear. This does not mean that you throw it all away. You just remove the culprit. And it's exactly the same thing you want to be careful with making sure that you do properly as part of your career change. So over to you. Think about it. If, you know, you have this opportunity, what is it, what exactly is it that you would no longer want to touch with a barge pole if you had the option? And you do, right? What is it you no longer want to have in your career? What is it you want to get rid of, throw away? Is it that subject matter that you don't give a flying fart about? You do not care about the subject matter that you talk about for a living. Is it your industry? Is it your toxic boss? Is it your horrible work colleague? Your horrible work culture? Is it the fact that you no longer want to be an employee? You want to work for yourself and, and decide when and where and how you're going to do things. Is it certain specific tasks? Is it your work hours, your workplace? What is it? Write your throw away list. Identify and write your throw away list and have fun doing it. That should be something you want to do. That is a great use of your brain power. Here's an even here's another reason why you would want to take action on this and why you'd want to apply this antidote to yourself. If you do not identify the pain points in your career, in your profession, in your job, what happens if you don't do that is that you will very likely end up replicating those very same elements in your next job, in your next career, in your own business. And then you'll wonder what happened. When you hear those, often when you hear those scare stories about people who hated their new career or the new business or the new job or whatever it was, it's so often when you look at it, it comes down to them not having done this piece of work. They didn't identify the pain points they wanted to get rid of. That's why they kept recreating them instead of actively starting to avoid recreating them. It's the same thing in relationships, right? If you don't realize where you keep going wrong, you keep dating that unavailable guy, well, Unless you actively identify that and decide you're not going to do that unavailable guy anymore, you're going to keep doing it. It's exactly the same thing with careers and with business. This is also one of the main reasons why you probably want to get professional advice with your career change so you don't end up in a worst case scenario. Maybe you've already fallen into this, right? You might have had this knee-jerk reaction, I hate my job, I just want to run away and, you know, yes, I probably will be throwing it all away. Yes, you probably will if you don't identify what it is that needs to be thrown away versus what can stay, which is what we'll go into next. This is so, so important. Write your throwaway list and get really clear about what is it that's causing you the most pain. Because if you don't, you'll replicate it and you will throw it all away, right? So that's why this is so important. So here's a recap of point number one. You right now probably have this worst case scenario that's distracting you, right? You focus almost exclusively on what you stand to lose if you want to change careers. Oh, I'll be throwing it all away. Can we agree? Don't waste any more time on that. 
Instead, identify and get clear on what it actually is that needs to be thrown away. That, my friend, is a much better use of your time. Okay? Now, let's move in to worst case distraction scenario number two. This is what happens when you spend so much time worrying about having nothing to offer if you were to change careers or start that business. You worry about who you would be without your profession, without your job title, without your status, without your reputation. You literally fear going empty-handed into the future. Let's talk about this. One of the biggest misconceptions and totally outdated ideas about what it means to change careers after 35 is this outdated idea or misconception that if you do that, then you'll be sliding all the way down the bottom of the career ladder and then you're going to have to spend years or decades working or clawing your way back up, right? This might be a fear that you have right now. I especially see this fear with my legal clients, my finance clients, my consulting clients, my IT clients, like the classic corporate professions, you know, where they have this worry about, but Ricky, who would I be if, if, I, if I'm no longer a lawyer, if I, or if I no longer have my fancy job title or my profession or my, you know, my, my profession to hide behind, so to say. I, I've spent so long, I work so hard. And let's be frank, in many ways, you probably spend a lot harder working you're on your, you know, lawyer or finance identity that you probably did being interesting outside of work. So there's a lot of ego and fear bound up with this as well. I totally get this, but hear me out. I do not want you to indulge in that distraction scenario. I do not want you to worry about that worst case nightmare because it has no upsides for you apart from keeping you stuck and fed up. And most importantly, that worst case scenario you're thinking, it totally ignores just how bloody epic you are. And it ignores the fact that everything you work for so far, it can stay with you. It belongs to you. You own it. I've got you here. All right. So let's talk about the antidote here. I can assure you that if you approach your transition in an intelligent way, you don't have to worry about this, you know, about sliding all the way down to the bottom of the ladder if you do this in an intelligent manner. Now, the worst case scenario might be, (laughs) to use that analogy, is that you might zigzag a little bit or go sideways or maybe even slide down a little bit. This might be more the case if you choose to be an employee again versus actually doing your own thing, which is often the best way to go about this. But the speed with which you'll move back up and even further is one of the advantages that you have after 35. If you actually take the time to truly identify, own, and translate for your new field what you already have to offer, what you already enjoy, because those things are the things you do not want to throw away. Those are the skills, the achievements, your unique advantages, your unique selling points that your career or professional line of work so far has helped you gain. In short, you never have to go into hand into what's next. You are not being thrown away. All of the skills, the competencies, whatever fancy HR words you want to throw out there, all of those belongs to you. They don't go anywhere just because you decide to do something different. In other words, all that you are as a person and also all the career capital, you know, that you, you accumulated so far, that's not being thrown away. All that's being thrown away are the points we talked about in, in point one, you know, the throwaway list, the painful bits that you should want to throw away. The rest can stay and you can and should actually use that as a foundation for what's next. In addition to obviously adding new things and missing ingredients and all of that, you can and should keep the best bits of your career so far. And this is what I teach all of my clients. You want to make sure that you have a really solid foundation to build on. That is very much looking at what you already have going for you. Even if you call it something else right now, even if that's called law or marketing or finance, whatever, we can absolutely work with that and rework it to be the foundation that you build on, the good bits. You do not, if you do this properly, you do not have to go into your career change or your next career or first business empty-handed. you got so much to build on. Now, this point is really up to you. I see so many otherwise very smart people being really lazy with their career change that they's like, oh, but you know, I don't have anything to offer and it's not applicable anywhere else. Forget about that, mate. That is not helpful. And also let's just bust the myth. There is, you know, the, the age of the career ladder 
is way past being the norm. It's way past its expiration stage. You know, unless you want to go into another boring profession, please don't think in those terms. It is not helpful, right? I really want you to own, identify and own the good things you work for so far. What do you already have to offer? And this is the thing. That's what I love about getting older, (laughs) about being over 35. You have the gift of age, my friend. And that is a gift that is incredible as a career changer. You've likely spent 10, 20 plus years working on something, you know, you've you already done things you're good at. You've gotten results. You've had achievements. You do never need to go into empty-handed into what's next. There, there, there's a lot more to say with this, and that's obviously what, a lot of what I help my clients with. But one of the quick exercises you can do just to start feeling better already is to look at your biggest achievements in your career so far where you got the best results, the great achievements. That's often a a combination of unique skills that you have as a person and about unique skills in the industry. Break that down, translate that, own that. That's a great way to start at least. Now, the biggest mistake that I see people make is here is they focus on what they don't have. They focus on their lack. Now, my friend, focus on what you already have to offer. Milk your age, milk your experience. You really want to do what I call that kind of skills achievements assessment. That is vital to do in order to avoid going empty hand into what's next. But it's also important for you to do because it's up to you to translate to your next to your first client or your next employer, just how relevant everything that you bring with you is and use their language. Okay. I really love helping my clients do this because it's a vital piece of work, but it's also, there, there is a real motivational thing that happens when you actually do these skills assessments. And that is that once you start looking at your assessments and your skills, you might realize that, oh my God, the last couple of months or years, I actually haven't done a lot of this because I'm so fed up with my current job that I'm not really pushing myself. I'm not learning. I'm not achieving. I'm just slowly derailing and de-skilling myself. That in itself should make you realize, yeah, you are in that worst case scenario. You need to get going. All right. Now, um, do check out episode 30 for some great tips around this. Uh, episode 30 is called Will I throw it all away if I change careers? Now, you already know that's not the case, but if you want to know how to make sure you don't do that, then check out episode 30. Right now, in that worst case scenario you're in right now, you are likely not growing. You're standing still. That is literally the opposite of future-proofing, my friend. All right? So recap, worst case distraction scenario number two, you worry about having nothing to offer if you were to change careers. You know, who would you be? You worry about who would you be without your profession, your job title, your status, your reputation. You fear going empty-handed into the future. You now know, don't have to worry about that. Hand on heart. Here's what I know for sure. And I know this from having worked with so many amazing people just like you. Transitioning, this is the reality. This is not the myth or the nightmare. This is the reality. Here's what I can tell you for a fact. Transitioning into a new career, starting your own business, doesn't overnight invalidate all of the incredible experiences and results and achievements you've achieved in another field or who you are as a person, including your incredible personality, but also your professional assets and and capital. But you just want to make sure that you do the translation work to show your future employers and clients just how relevant your past is. And what a unique selling point it is. You've got this, my friend. Let's move into worst case distraction scenario number three. This is where you mindlessly waste time and energy worrying in advance. What I mean is here, you worry in advance as in you worry about things that might or might not happen way into the future and way ahead of time. You worry so far in advance. Instead, of actively dealing with the worst case scenario you are already in right now today. This, I see this all the time. My dear worry warts, my perfectionist people, my overthinkers, here's what I know about you. You do this. Um, I know this also from a lot of the questions that people ask. Here's what you waste an awful lot of time doing. You waste an awful lot of time worrying in advance. You worry way into the future about things that you don't even have enough information to worry properly about. 
yet, and yet you do it. You know, what is likely keeping you awake at 3 a.m. is that you're worrying about some really vague step that you might or might not be taking six months or 12 months or 18 months down the line if if you were to change careers or start that business. Notice the non-committal language here, right? You, you were like, oh, but if I were to change careers, then, oh my God, this might happen in six months. And oh my God, imagine if I were to do this, then, then this might happen in 18 months. And oh my God, you see the spiral. And this is... Stuff that you don't you don't even have any information to know how to worry properly about that yet, but you worry so far in advance. I often see this with with um with the questions that I get from people for the podcast. Oh, but I worry about what if this and that? And I'm like, wow, you you, you don't even how to worry about that yet. You you don't even have enough information to know that that's what you should worry about. <laughs> so what a waste of space. Now the problem here is, and I see people doing this all the time, my mid-career professionals, right? You haven't even, in most cases, that the real issue why you worry so much is because you haven't yet figured out your what. As in, what is the best case scenario for you? What is that best career or that best business? What does that actually look like for you? I've seen so many cases, people haven't yet figured out their what. But even so, they already start worrying about the how about how it's ever going to happen, what might happen, what's going to happen, what's not going to happen, that what that you haven't even figured out yet. In so many cases, and this might be the, the case for you listening, you haven't even figured out your best scenario yet. You haven't even figured out what you want yet. And yet, you worry about all kinds of things about the how. How is it ever going to happen? When will it happen? All about that. Do you see what I mean here? That is not helpful. Or for those of you who might know your what already, that best case scenario, that career, that business, you, 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 what I see people spend an awful lot of time wasting their time doing here is that they don't worry about, oh, but is it going to make money? And oh, will I like it? Instead of actually test driving it, getting out of your head and test driving elements to find out. <laughs> Whereas those of you who don't let you know your what, you should figure out your what before you start worrying. And also, once you actually figure out your what, you realize there's a lot less worrying to do because <laughs> you're so excited about creating it. My friend, analysis paralysis, you often hear me say, is what happens when you get way ahead of yourself in your head and not bring the real world. So come right back to the present, my friend. You know, as a general rule, you definitely want to start by figuring out what you want first. If you don't know what you want, that's all you should worry about right now. Figuring out what is your best case scenario. What is it really that you want? What is that career or that business you really want? Once you're clear about that, then you go into to test driving it to figure out if you're going to like it, all of that kind of stuff. And then you go into launching it or doing it. And often what I see is what keeps people awake at night or what keep these kind of nightmare distractions and eyes going is that they try to jump between the stages or they try to skip stages intellectually. But that's not possible, which is why you're stuck. You might have noticed. You actually, in the career transition process, there's a very clear framework and sequence to follow. And that's because you need to go through each stage to get the information you need and the clarity you need before you can go to the next stage. You cannot leapfrog the transition stages. They need to be going through. It's like a, I often say it's like a, a treasure hunt. You need to get the clues and the clues before you can move to the next thing. So that is likely what's happening right now. You're trying to jump ahead when you don't have enough information to jump ahead. But let's talk about why you're actually doing this. Why do you keep defaulting to worrying in advance and to worrying way at a time when you don't even know what to probably worry about? Well, guess what? As an overthinker or overwhelmer or perfectionist, it requires much less effort and it's a lot less risky and is therefore much more convenient as a procrastination strategy to worry about issues way down the line, way into the future, exactly because it does not require you to make a decision or to take action right now. How convenient, right? It's so much easier to worry about way down the line issues because they don't require you to take action right now. How comfy, how convenient. Ooh, mm -hmm. I'm poking at you here for a reason. Do you see the twisted, stupid logic of this? And it doesn't help you see how come this distraction tendency, this distraction scenario, worst case scenario, it keeps you stuck in the same place whilst also at the same time distracting you from having to confront the real issues you are actually having at this moment already. Let's go into the reality check 
antidote, right? Plus, let's talk about the main point I've been building up to from the very beginning of this episode by showing you just how all of your, what you think is worst case scenarios, what they are is worst case distraction scenarios. They are really not the real worst case scenario. Again, what is the real worst case scenario is the one you're in right now. Now, let's just talk about this. I know that for most of you listening, the biggest fear, the biggest career change fear for most people over 35 is failure, right? I'm sure you can agree with that. For most of us, that it really is the biggest fear is that you are so afraid of failing. That is your biggest fear. But let's go there. Let's for a moment go to your worst case fear. What you think is the worst case scenario is when you failed. Let's say you do have a stab at your career change. You do have a stab at your business. And for some reason, it doesn't work out. You, in quotation marks, failed. Just for a moment, think about what is your worst case scenario? Yeah, you failed. But let's get clear. You haven't, you've just failed. You haven't died, right? So... Would you like to know in reality how these things work out? Let me tell you, because I, I, you know, this is obviously my business. This is my work, what I do. In reality, what all of that happens if people, if it doesn't work out the first time and if people in quotation marks fail, all that happens is that they end up in a scenario where they're still alive. <laughs> you don't die, right? So there's hope. And what happens is that once you, you know, most people, it actually does work, but let's just talk about worst case scenario, because that's what you want to talk about is that what you'll end up with is that you will have obtained new and invaluable information about yourself and your assumptions, which can help you build an even better career and even better business than you were capable before now because you haven't even tried. So all that happens if, if it doesn't really work out first time, which is to say, it's, it's like a worst case scenario for most people it actually does, then all you end up with is just a lot of information and you can try again because now you know a lot more about yourself so you can get a lot clearer to, about what the best case scenario actually is for you, what that best career, what that business is. And here's what happens then in that case, then you would just go back and use your the profession you have right now to make money whilst you create that even better career change or that even better business while you have another stop. So what happens in real life is that people just go back to a similar scenario to what they have, you know, what you have right now. They go back to a similar job. Some of them go back to the same job, whatever it is, don't have to, you know, but you use your profession to make money, but this time for a limited amount of time, because now you're so much more excited about knowing what that right career or what that right business is. So you can start creating it again, i.e. worst case scenario in case your first step doesn't work out is that you'll just end up in a very similar situation to the one you're in right now. The worst case scenario that you're already in right now. But the difference is you will actually have something to show for it, right? Because you had a step, so now you know yourself a lot better. Right now you know very little, right? So the worst case scenario in case you fail in quotation marks is that you'll just go back to a similar scenario to the one you're in right now, but with valuable information. So let that sink in. Right now, you are already in the worst case scenario that you'll just go back to. But the difference is that you haven't even tried. You haven't even had a stab at anything. You are still stuck and fed up. And you, you know, and you might be stuck there for a very long time versus if you had a stab, you're just going back for a short time while you work on the second, you know, the second way of doing it, right? So whereas you, you're just staying stuck and you're just overthinking your assumptions. You're not creating anything new or anything better. You're just stuck with the devil, you know. Hmm, that is really a worst case scenario because you're stuck. At least worst case scenario, if you were to try, you'll just go back to a similar thing, but for a limited time whilst you work on that next step. Hmm? Here's what I want you to get really, really clear about. Here's what I know for sure. And I'll repeat this again. You got 10 plus years of solid experience. That's not going to be invalidated with you having a few years of career change experiments and then go back and get similar job or better one, you know, in case the first one didn't work out, Right? But here's the thing, right now, in that worst case scenario, you also have all of the toxic elements of, you know, the ones that you want to throw away. Whereas at least if you have a stab and then go back for a little while because you have to, then you can get rid of all of those toxic elements. So it'll be an even better one, <laughs> that worst case scenario that you might go back to in case it doesn't work out. Right? 
So you are already right now in your worst case scenario with nothing to show for it. Hmm, let that sink in. But I want to end here on a really positive note now that you should really have motivation for getting your butt in gear. Have you noticed there is one massively important thing that we rarely, we've hardly touched upon here. And that is the best case scenario. And I really want to encourage you to start spending a lot more time thinking about your best case scenario. Because like I said, you know, how much time do you actually spend worrying about all these worst case scenario versus how much time do you actually spend getting clear on what your best case scenario is? What is it that you really want? What is that best career or that best business? What if it did work out for you? What if you love it? What if it's a massive success? You make way more money or you have way more meaning or you are much happier. You feel so much more like yourself. You don't have to play a game any longer. You can work from home. You can work anywhere in the world or you can work in a beautiful office. You can work for yourself, work with great colleagues, whatever it is. Do you have a clear picture of what your best case scenario is and how much time do you actually spend thinking about that and focusing on creating it, right? Versus how much time you spend worrying about worst case distraction scenarios, right? To too worthy, spend more time focused on your best case scenario. Here's what I can tell you, having worked in this field for so long, and this is something I love doing with my clients inside of your career change map. We That program is literally helping you design your best case scenario. We literally work towards at the end of that program, you will literally have what I call your wonder wall, where it's this post-it thing, where you literally have all of the elements decided on that make up your best case scenario, your best career, your best business. What does it look like? What are the different elements that make it up? I love helping my clients design that and decide on that What are the elements you actually do want in your career or in your own business? Is it a career? Is it a business? What does it look like? Because once you're really, really clear on that, then you can, then you know your what, and then you know your how as well, because you, once you know your what, your how will become a lot more obvious. And that means that my clients can just stay focused on creating that best case scenario because they know it's worthwhile. And they know the worst thing can happen is they might just, you know, they are already in the worst case scenario. So the worst thing that can happen is they might just have to, if it doesn't work out the first time, they're going to have to go back to that for a little while or something different, but they know what their best case is and they're excited about creating it and they can focus so much more on it. My clients, they keep going till they get what they want because they're not afraid. They know what the worst case scenario is, right? And if things don't work out, they can always just go back there or something similar. But here's the thing. If you don't know what your best case scenario is, if you don't know what what is, what it is that you really want, then you're much more likely to worry about worst case scenario, about failing, right? If you want my help crafting your best case scenario, if you want your own wonder wall of knowing what is your best scenario, I can help you with that. You can check out your career change map over at the careerchangepodcast.com under the work with me. All right. Now let's pull all of this together. Now that you know what's at stake here, I really want you going forward I really want you to decide to focus the majority of your time on your best case scenario, figuring out what it is or making it happen. And remember, you're already in your worst case scenario right now. And if something doesn't work out first time, you'll just go back to that or something better even, right? In the unlikely event that it might not work out first time. But what if it did? Consider your best case scenario. And also think about this, is your best case scenario worth risking your worst case scenario for? Well, bearing in mind, you're already in it. It should be worth the risk. So get your freaking butt in gear and go create that best case scenario. I am so excited for you. You already know what the worst that can happen is. You're there right now. I'll see you over at thecareerchangepodcast.com. Thank you so much for listening.